Good morning and welcome to Friday Morning Prayer. And welcome to dear Jan who's logged in and to those not logged in, you're welcome. This morning I, would, I feel guided to dedicate our morning prayer for our young people because listening to the radio early this morning it would appear that the NSPCC has revealed a report outlining 19,000 plus young people self-harming. So I'd like to dedicate my prayers today for all our young people who are in this situation of utter helplessness and pray that they're given the courage. So this morning we begin by lighting a light to represent the presence of divine love surrounded by the angelic messengers of hope. And we come together, you and me, and we break bread at this table of love, thanking the one true loving God, who has many names but is still the same God, for looking down and protecting our young people today. Amen. And now we begin by calling on the Spirit of God to join all of us here. And our prologue this morning, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Friday morning we commune with the angel of air saying, angel of air, enter my lungs and give air of life to my whole body. As we say this, we contemplate on the atmosphere around us as we connect with the rhythm of our breathing. So let us just be still for a moment. Maybe you've been rushing around as I have like a headless chicken. So let us just be still. Take a deep breath and allow the angel of air infuse our mind, body and spirit with divine love. And in our out breath we say thank you God. This morning our prayers are going to be a little eclectic so let us just begin with an opening prayer from the little book of prayers from Iona. I awake this morning in the presence of the holy angels of God. May heaven open wide before me, above me and around me, that I might see the Christ of my love and his sunlit company in all the things of earth today. And as its advent, we shall say the beautiful hymn from the Divine Office for Friday. And here we go. Just bear with me. I did have it and I've lost, I've lost the little sticker. Ah. Hear the herald, voice resounding, Christ is near, it seems to say. Cast away the dreams of darkness, welcome Christ, the light of day. Wakened by this solemn warning, let the earthbound soul arise. Christ, her sun, all sloth dispelling, shines upon the morning skies. So when next he comes in glory, shrouding all the earth in fear may he then as our defender on the clouds of heaven appear and i'm making sure i put a marker in there for later on our first reading this morning we will be guided by spirit as we read from psalms now psalm 39 i said to myself i'll watch it 
I'll grit my teeth and hold in my hostilities, at least as long as I am in the midst of ungodly people. And I honestly tried, but it was no use. The pressures increased, and the more I stewed about it, the more frustrated I became. Finally, I exploded. Oh God, demonstrate some concern for me. Give me some reason for this incessant conflict, some objective for the fast ebbing life of mine. You made me what I am, a bubble or a bag of gas, and the span of my existence is but a speck of dust to you. It is true about every man and woman. He is no more than a smidgen of moist air or a shadow without lasting substance. Man enters and endures this temporal turmoil for no reason whatsoever. He agonizes and toils only to leave the fruits for someone else to enjoy. So I wonder what in the world it's all about. I have no hope at all except in you. I continue to lay claim to your forgiveness for my failures. Keep them from making me a despised and an abhorred creature in the sight of men. Lift your heavy hand from me. I am utterly weary of its oppressing weight. When you punish a man with judgment of his failures, you suck up like a tornado everything that is precious to him. Surely man is more than a passing cloud on the eternal horizon. Hear and decipher these confusing thoughts of mine. Lend your ear to these agonizing cries. Turn not away from my pains and my problems. I am just a swiftly passing traveler, as were all men before me. Let me have just a morsel of happiness before I leave this world and enter into oblivion. Isn't that a sad psalm? It really does touch you in some profound way of the helplessness that we can fall to in our depths of despair. But in this season of Advent, we have hope. We have the promise that God, our Father Mother, would allow the Son of God to incarnate as a human being, as a helpless, defenseless child. And though on Christmas morn, we won't be actually seeing the Christ reborn. We will be sensing it in our heart, the rebirthing of the Spirit of God's Son. So in this season of Advent, let us take every opportunity to reflect on the power of God's love for us. No matter how far we estrange ourselves from God, as many are today, when you look at the troubles in the Middle East, when you see Muslims killing one another, Shiite and Sunni, where you see families totally at loggerheads, where you see greedy entrepreneurs destroying the vulnerable, where governments in various countries become so corrupt that the poor get poorer and the fat cats get fatter. But God sees this, but God won't intervene because we have free will. We have to ask God for help in our life. And the moment we articulate and say to God, Lord God, I am struggling, help me. And I bet your bottom dollar that within an hour or two or before the day ends, someone will be sent by God to either phone you or knock on your door or send you a letter or a card that will uplift you and restore your confidence in mankind. And for us who are Christian and who believe in a loving God, 
Our Christmas card or get well wish is to actually be aware and made aware that God became man and suffered the same indignities that you and I suffer in our faith journey. Rejection, misunderstanding, fear, doubt, depression, despair, hopelessness. And that gives me courage that when the dark night of the soul hits and kicks in, that you can turn to the Lord and know that he truly empathizes with you because he's been there. He's walked the walk. So now let us come to our next reading, which is from the little Christian booklet, the UCB. And for Friday we read, for you will be treated as you treat others. And that's a quote from the Christian New Testament Bible from Matthew 7, verse 2. In his book, Running with the Giants, John Maxwell tells of a new pastor who shared the following eight rules with his congregation. One, if you've a problem with me, come and see me privately. I'll do the same for you. Two, if someone else has a problem with me and comes to you, send them to me. I'll do the same. And thirdly, if someone won't come to me, say, let's go see him together. I'll do the same. Fourthly, be careful how you interpret me. I'd rather do that. It's too easy to misinterpret intentions. I'll also be careful how I interpret you. Fifthly, if it's confidential, don't tell. If you or anyone else comes to me in confidence, I won't tell, unless they're going to harm themselves, harm someone else, or a child has been physically or sexually abused. I expect the same from you. And sixth, I don't read unsigned letters. Seventh, I don't manipulate. I won't be manipulated. Don't let others manipulate you. And don't let others try to manipulate me through you. And eight, when in doubt, just say so. If I can answer without misrepresenting something or breaking a confidence, I will. Those eight rules can be reduced to one sentence. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. Good marriages, business relationships and friendships are based on the golden rule Jesus gave us. One final thought, abstain from all appearance of evil. If people could construe that you're taking advantage of them, even after you've had a chance to explain your motives, you may need to rethink your idea. Pretty good advice, don't you think? There you go. And I'm guided to pick up the lovely little book from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the little book of wisdom, and open it at random. Food for thought. Religion is a food for the mind. And as we all have different tastes, we must take that which is most suitable for us. And our next reflection, work for the welfare of all. With a pure heart, you can carry on any work and your profession becomes a real instrument to help the human community. Rather lovely, aren't they? But what does Jesus have to tell us? Well, picking up this lovely little book, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young, I'm going to open it at random and I'm going to ask Jesus to speak to your heart and mind this morning. Come away with me for a while. The world with its non-stop demands can be put on hold. Most people put me on hold. 
rationalizing that someday they will find time to focus on me. But the longer people push me into the background of their lives, the harder it is for them to find me. You live among people who glorify busyness. They have made time a tyrant that controls their lives. Even those who know me as savior tend to march to the tempo of the world. They have bought into the illusion that more is always better, more meetings, more programs, more activity. I have called you to follow me on a solitary path, making time alone with me, your highest priority and deepest joy. It is a pathway largely unappreciated and often despised. However, you have chosen the better thing which will never be taken away from you. Moreover, as you walk close to me, I can bless others through you. Ah. Oh. So let us come away with the Lord in this season of Advent and let us rest a while by his feet. And let there be no fear in our heart, no judgment on our lips, no judgment on our lips. And let us allow the Spirit of God speak openly and truthfully through us. And if we do have to criticize or correct a brother or sister, it's always wise to pray first, asking God for the words and always say, you know I love you and you know I come to you from love. So what I share with you today is rooted in love. But I bet you anything they'll immediately jump to their own conclusion and start blaming you for being on a guilt trip. But let us pray now, Father, Mother, God. You have called each one of us here today to say thank you for the gift of human life, for the gift of family, for the gift of this spiritual community for the gift that others share of their precious time in celebrating joy. And now we come back to the office for Advent, an office that all the monks and nuns in the Christian world will read today. And there's a short reading from the prophet Jeremiah. A ruler shall appear, one of themselves. A governor shall arise from their own number. I will myself bring him near, and so he shall approach me, says the Lord. So you shall be my people, and I will be your God. This is the word of the Lord. And the short response read, The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem, like the sun he will rise over you. His glory will appear in your midst, the glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem, like the sun he will rise over you. And the Benedictus Antiphon for Friday morning, say to the faint-hearted, be strong and do not fear. Behold, the Lord our God will come. And now I invite you to join me for the Benedictus, the Canticle of Zechariah, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and he has redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty savior in the house of David, his servant, as he promised through our fathers Abraham and his sons forever. Excuse me. Oh. Those who were his prophets from of old, a savior who would free us from our sins, from the hands of all who hate us. So his love for our fathers is revealed and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that free from fear and save from the hands of our enemies, that we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. And as for you, 
little child, you shall become a prophet of God, the Most High. You shall go before the Lord to prepare his ways before him, to make known to his people their salvation through forgiveness of their sin and the loving kindness of the heart of our God who visits us like the dawn from on high and he will give light to those who sit in darkness and those who dwell in the shadow of death. He will guide them into the way of peace. And now for the antiphon. Say to the faint-hearted, be strong and do not be afraid. Behold, the Lord our God will come. And now we come to our morning intercessions. It is time for us to wake from sleep. The day of our salvation is near. Response, Lord, may your kingdom come. Help us to show our repentance by a new way of living. Response, Lord, may your kingdom come. Prepare us for the coming of your word by opening our hearts to receive him. Response, Lord, may your kingdom come. Help us to overcome our pride and raise us from the depths of our weakness. Response, Lord, may your kingdom come. Throw down the walls of hatred between nations. Clear the way for those who work for peace. Response, Lord, may your kingdom come. And now for a moment, let us be still. And let us bring to the Lord, to our spiritual teachers, whatever may be ailing us this morning. We may be concerned about a member of our family, or we may be troubled by something within our being. Let us name it, bless it, and release it to God. In a mindset of gratitude, and just say thank you, Lord. This morning we began morning prayer by dedicating it for all the young people around the world who at this time are struggling to cope with the energetic shift in their consciousness and many of whom are self-harming, a cry for help. So we remember here in the UK the 19,000 plus who in the last 12 months have self-harmed. We pray for them. We remember this morning all gathered here and all the many, many requests we receive for prayer. We bring each one of them to the Lord. We bring our dear Jan who's logged in and her family. We bring Lisa and her search for a place to live. We pray this morning for all those who've come and gone in our community. We send them all a blessing. We remember today all our religious leaders and pray that the Spirit of God will touch their hearts to return to Assisi in 2017 and dedicate it as the year of peace. We pray for all the men and women of different faiths who've surrendered their heart to God, to Yahweh, to Allah, to Jehovah, in service for peace, for the United Nations, for an end to the conflicts in people's lives, in their homes and villages and towns and cities, and in the various countries of our world, especially in Iraq and Syria, for the displaced persons from that conflict for the refugees and the migrants escaping the horrors of war. We pray for young women who live in those countries where they're completely disrespected and treated as if they're a second-class citizen, where they have no right. How appalling is that? And where many are stoned to death for alleged infidelity where many are married into relationships where they will be abused 
and where there will be severe domestic violence. And we pray for the courage of those who choose not to go with an arranged marriage, but sadly, many are caught and killed by a member of their family. So we pray today for an end to violence, a violence to oneself, violence to others, and violence to our sacred earth and the animal kingdom. And with Jan, we pray for world peace, yes, and all gathered here. So let us now pray the beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our indiscretions, Lord. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of evil, negativity and despair. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, keep us ever alert and watchful as we await the coming of your Son, so that faithful to his teaching, we may hasten to meet our Saviour with lamps alight. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And I want to read a Jane prayer, if I may. And this is for a universal benediction. Praise to the spiritual victors. Praise to the liberated souls. Praise to the spiritual leaders. Praise to the spiritual teachers. Praise to all saints in the world who practice non-violence and reverence for all life in action and pluralistic viewpoint in their thinking. These five salutations are capable of destroying all the sins. This is the first happiness among all forms of happiness. And now, our blessing for this Friday morning from the Little Book of Celtic Prayers. The love and affection of the angels be with us. The love and affection of all the saints be with us. The love and affection of heaven be with us to lead us and to cherish us this day. And that brings us to the end of our morning prayer. So now, in the presence of Christ and all the great spiritual teachers of all religions, we pray, Father, Mother God, in the presence of all that is holy to you, we thank you for our time together. And we now pray that the Lord Christ will lay his healing hand on each gathered here and those who will watch this live recording at a later time, and not forgetting our young people who are self-harming. Amen. <sighs> Go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom. Inshallah, paxet bonum om shanti. Solo di carita, salam alaikum and may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken in your heart that you are a beloved of God and that nothing can harm you unless it is met with God's approval. So have a beautiful day, dear friends. And if you're discouraged, remember, you're not on your own. We're all in it with you and we're all here together. If it's your bedtime, sleep well till we meet again. God bless. <laughs>